singing good songs. What a blessing. I contemplated on asking Brad to sing one more. I, I really wanted to sing Complete in Thee. I went right along with all that, but man, it was so good. What a blessing. Anybody got a song on their heart they want to sing this afternoon? I don't have anyone signed up to sing. I haven't asked anyone to sing. But if you have a song you would like to sing, I think Lou wanted to sing a song. Is that, is that, oh, it was Matt. Oh, okay. Matt, well, I won't. I could make a follow up comment to that, but I, I won't. Amen. Amen. <laughs> While we're at peace, we'll just remain at peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Appreciate you being here this evening. We've been studying the, um, the armor of God from Galatians chapter 6. And we'll continue that this afternoon. We'll look at the next piece of armor I mentioned in verse 16, I believe it is. I will say this, I don't anticipate that I will be lengthy this afternoon. Of course, don't read nothing into that. That could or could not be true. Um, but uh, the, next, the next one of these pieces of armor is the helmet of salvation. And um, I'll mention some things about that. This is the fifth piece of our Christian armor. And as we go through this, we'll notice that it has some similarities with the breastplate of righteousness and also the shield of faith. But I'll read some verses of Scripture. I'll read beginning in verse number 10 again, and we'll, we'll pray together. But notice verse number 10, Ephesians chapter 6, Finally, my brethren, I've mentioned this several times. I'll continue to mention it. We are talking to Christian people here. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, we talked about this this morning, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you are able, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here this evening. Thank you for the service this morning. Thank you for the good fellowship that we've had today. And we thank you, Lord, for the time to sing together and to pray together. It's just been a wonderful, wonderful experience. We thank you so much for that. And we thank you so much for helping us this morning, but Lord, that time has passed, and I certainly need your help again uh, this afternoon. We're needy people, I'm a needy individual, and I realize, Lord, I cannot do anything to be a blessing or a help apart from you. And I pray, Lord, if it be your will, you would help me again this afternoon to be a blessing and a help to this group of people. Lord, we we'll certainly will thank you for that and praise you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're talking about the helmet of salvation, just to uh, maybe mention a couple of things by way of remembrance. Salvation is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Salvation is of the Lord. I like what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, that He is able to save to the uttermost all them that come unto God by Him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12 that neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Thank God for salvation, and that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so the Scripture clearly teaches us that salvation is Jesus in you by faith. Now, we've already studied several pieces of this armor, and we've already discussed the fact that there is a positional righteousness and there is practical righteousness. We, are, we talked about this morning that we are saved by faith, and then on numerous occasions the Bible encourages us that we are also to live by faith. And so this has to do with that shield of faith. 
Now, we notice that with this helmet of salvation, uh, this is, this is uh, something that's obvious, but it needs to be pointed out. This is a helmet of salvation, but we're already saved. And so this, this, uh, this is salvation for saved people. How about that? So this helmet of salvation is salvation for saved people. It is a salvation that we are hoping for, we have been promised for, but we have not yet received. We do not yet have. Maybe I could put it that way. And so we need to be constantly reminded that our battle is not against flesh and blood. We read that in the verse of scriptures. Our battle is a spiritual battle, and many times our battle has to do with our mind. Our battle is in our thinking. Our battle is in our thought life. It's, it gets in our head, amen. And so we notice that uh, this, this helmet of salvation, if you know anything about a, a helmet, we, people don't normally wear helmets because they look cool or because they're a fashion statement. They, they wear those things for protection, and so this helmet of salvation is a protection of, of uh, sorts for us. And uh, so let's, let's look at a couple of things. I, I wanna, I've already read these verses, but I want to point out just a couple of things. I want to begin reading in verse number 14 again. And I want you to notice with me, if you will, the base, what the basis of our armor is. And I'll point out a couple of things as we go along. Verse 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So verse 14 deals with truth and righteousness. Now, look at verse number 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And so while verse 14 uh, deals with truth and righteousness, verse 15 deals with peace. And it has to do with peace with God. And uh, I'll just throw this in while we're going through here. You cannot have peace with God and not be at peace with his, with his children, with his family, amen. And so we need that peace. Now look at verse 16. The Bible says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So verse 16 deals with faith. Now look at verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, notice that is a capital S. This is dealing with the Holy Spirit, which is the Word of God. So verse 17 is salvation and Spirit. So if you notice, I, I went through those things just, just briefly, quickly, just to point out one thing. This armor has nothing to do with fleshly. It is a spiritual armor. This armor is for our spiritual life. And so if we're going to stand or if we're going to withstand in this evil day, we must put on this armor that God has provided to us. It's been given to us by our wonderful Savior. And it seems that in the day that we're living, there are very few of the many believers. And I believe that there, it doesn't matter what I believe, but I think there's a lot of folks who are saved. I believe there's a lot of people that have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. They believed on Him for salvation, and that's a tremendous blessing. But not a great many of those who have professed Christ as their Savior are standing. Many of them are leaning at best. Many of them are reeling, and some of them have just laid down altogether. And so this, this armor is for our standing. We must have on the whole armor of God if we're going to be able to stand in the evil day. Now, I don't have any uh, intention of preaching on the evil day, but we are certainly living in the evil day. Men are evil. The Bible says that wicked men and evil seduce shall wax worse and worse. So those things are not getting better. They're getting worse. Now... I realize that there are some, as we went through this list, and we talked about this truth, and we talked about righteousness, and we talked about peace, and, and we talked about faith, and we talked about, in this verse, we'll talk about salvation and the Spirit. So I understand that there are some who have little or no truth. I understand that there are some folks that get saved, and maybe they, they never get in a Bible-believing church. They never, they never grow in, in faith. They never learn a lot of truth. And then there are those who have some truth, but they refuse to, impl refuse to implement that truth into their lives and uh, in order that they might live a righteous life. 
And then there are those who have truth and they have righteousness and they have no peace with God because they have bitterness in their heart and they have animosity towards others. And so they have truth, they have righteousness, but they have no peace uh, in their heart. And I want to just say this, they won't last long. It's okay, so you won't last long like that. You'll be one of those sitting now, so some have truth, righteousness, and peace, but they often lean to their own understanding instead of leaning on the truth of God's Word. And we understand the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And so there are some who have truth, they have righteousness, they have peace, they have faith, but they allow themselves to be discouraged, they allow themselves to be defeated uh, because they refuse to protect their thinking. They refuse to protect their head with this helmet of salvation that's mentioned as our next piece of armor. So if you're discouraged and if you're defeated, there, there's, very little, there's very little possibility that you're going to be using the sword of the Spirit effectively if you're using it at all. And uh, so uh, we, need, we need all of this armor intact and we need all of this armor working so that we might take this sword of the Spirit and uh, the Lord would use us or allow us to reach the world with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're struggling to stand, it's definitely not very possible that you're going to be standing and fighting back. So what is this helmet of salvation? Now, I've, I've mentioned that. I want to mention it again. Remember, Paul's talking to saved people. Verse number 10, finally, my brethren, I'm saved. I have eternal life. I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to heaven. And as my, uh, Brother Marty Snow used to say all the time, uh, I'd say, how you doing, Brother Marty? He said, saved, on my way to heaven, and enjoying the trip. And that's, ain't, ain't that a blessing? I like it when you see saved people that's enjoying the trip. I like it when I'm on the street and we're doing street ministry and someone comes by and uh, you ask them about being saved or they make mention of being saved and they're excited about it. They're happy about it. They're, they're enjoying the trip. And then you have that crowd like Brother George had a guy the other day. He was, uh, uh, George was telling me he wasn't even, he's just talking to the guy and he uh, asked him a couple of questions about, you know, being saved, when, how long he'd been saved, when he got saved and all that. And the guy come back in a few minutes and he was, he was upset at George. He said, don't you know those questions are offensive? I, that's, that's sad. I, I've never been offended that somebody asked me when I got saved or asked me for a testimony. I'm happy to tell you about being saved. Amen. And so this, I, I'm saved. I, I have eternal life. I, but, but, but I am not as saved as I'm going to be. Amen. You say, I don't know about that. Pre well, let me show you. Come to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Talking about this helmet of salvation. I'm saved. I've got eternal life already. I'm not working to keep it or trying to maintain it or earn it. I've already got it. Praise God for that. But I'm not as saved as I'm going to be. And I'll, I'll show what I mean by that. Come to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, look at verse number 6. The Bible says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Now again, it's very obvious that the Apostle Paul here in 1 Corinthians is writing to saved people. And yet Paul is writing to saved people. And in verse 9 and in verse number 10, in writing to folks who are already saved, we see that they're hoping for and they're looking forward to obtaining a salvation that they have not yet received from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so notice, if you will, also that this salvation stands in contrast to the wrath of God. If you notice in, in verse number 9, the Bible says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath. And so those who, those who are unbelievers, those who are, those who are unsaved, they're already under the condemnation of God. And if they don't get saved, they are going to receive the wrath of God. But you and I who are saved, praise God for that salvation, but there is still a salvation for us 
to receive. Amen. Now come back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And then you can go ahead and get Revelation 21 if you want to. John chapter 3. Then we'll look at something in Revelation chapter 21. I'm glad I'm saved. Praise the Lord. John chapter 3. Look at verse number uh, 36. We mentioned this verse this morning. And uh, the unbelievers are already lost. They have not yet received the full outpouring of the wrath of God. But they're appointed to it. The Bible says in John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I want to read another verse too. I had a, uh, and it was, he, he, was, he was not trying to be in any way facetious at all. He was just uh, exhorting after the service. And he said, Preacher, you was going through that this morning, verse 15, 16. He said, I wish you would have kept reading. And I said, oh, I, I know why. Look at this, verse number 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And so if you're not saved and you die in that condition, you have not yet received the full wrath of God, but you're appointed to it. And if you don't get born again, you're going to receive it. Now, this same thing is true for all of us that are saved. We're saved, but we have not yet received the full benefit of our salvation. Now, I don't want to confuse you. I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about in a minute. I can't be any more saved than I already am. The moment that I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, I got saved. I didn't, I, I received the Spirit of God the moment I got saved. I, I'm not, I cannot, I cannot be any more saved than I'm already saved. But I am looking forward to a salvation. And that is the redemption of this body. Amen. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So uh, we are saved, but we still sin. I am longing for the day when I will be absent from this sinful flesh. I am, I am longing for the time when we are going to be in a place where there will be no more sin. I'm not going to have to contend with this flesh. I'm not going to have to contend with this world and all the, the evil, evilness and the wickedness and the ungodliness going on in this world. I'm going to be delivered from that one day. And so there is a hope, a helmet of salvation. I, it's not always going to be like this. It's going to be better. It's not all bad right now. My life is far better than it was before. But this helmet of salvation, I have a hope of something in the future that is far brighter than anything I've ever seen. Amen. What a blessing. So uh, we are saved, but we are, we are uh, not yet united with the Savior. One of these days, uh, my faith is going to become sight. The one who bled and died and suffered for my salvation, the one who rose again for my justification, one of these days, what I now see through the eye of faith, my eyes is going to behold. And the Bible says that we are going to be united with Him and we will never, again be apart from him uh, through the, uh, the, the seven year tribulation period. We are going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. All through that thousand year millennial reign we will never be absent from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then throughout all eternity in the ages to come my salvation will be complete because I will be with him. That's the helmet of salvation. I know there's trouble. I know there's problems. I know there's situations we can't control. I know there's things and heartaches. And, and none of those things are going away while here on this earth. But my helmet of salvation is that there's a brighter day coming, my friend. Hallelujah. We're saved, but God has not yet wiped away all the tears and all the pain and all the heartache and all the troubles and all the trials but one day he will. Look at Revelation chapter 21. I just could turn there just a moment ago. Nothing new. You know all these scripture. But what a blessing it is to read them again. Revelation 21, verse number 1, the Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, 
And God himself shall wipe, shall be with them and be their gods and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. So you see right now I am saved, but there is tears in my eyes. I am saved, but there is death all around us. I am saved, but there is sorrow. I am saved, but there is crying. I am saved, but there is pain. I am saved, but there's all kind of things around us that we wish were passed away. But one of these days, and my helmet of salvation is the promise that there is coming a day when all of these things are going to be something that was, something that has been, something that is no more, amen, when we are forever with the Lord. What a blessing. Amen. Verse number five says that he that sat upon the throne said, behold, look, here it is. I make all things new. Praise the Lord. Come back to John chapter 14. Should have told you to hold your place in John. We're saved. We're saved. Praise the Lord. But we have not yet received what he has gone to prepare for us. Amen. John chapter 14, look at verse number 1. Let, your heart be, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now listen, I, I praise the good Lord for current salvation, but I have not yet received a large portion of what's been promised to me from my Savior. Amen. Look, or I, 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 I've not yet taken possession of it. Let me put it that way. Romans chapter 13. Come to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. I've heard preachers say, said myself, I like the analogy. In reality, I'm only two-thirds saved. My body has not yet been redeemed. Look at Romans chapter 13. The Bible says in verse number 11, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time that we wake out of sleep. Now notice this next phrase. For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Now, if you, if you don't have any understanding of Scripture and you're reading along, you read this and say, what, what, what in the world are you talking about? I'm, I'm already saved. What is he talking about? My salvation is nearer than we believed. Look at verse number 12. It says, The night is far spent, the day is his hand. Let us, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let me, let me, allow me, if you will, to paraphrase. Wake up. Our salvation is nearer than we believed. Now, we believed unto salvation but we believe that there is coming, there is coming a day, amen, when all of this is going to be a reality in our life. So the depth of that salvation, the fullness of that salvation, there is a reality and an experience of that salvation that we have not yet, uh, we don't know anything about other than what we read about, but one of these days it's coming. Now, if you think, you say, Hi, preacher, I, um, are, do you, do you not deal with sin in your life? I, I do, and I, I don't like it, I don't enjoy it. And, and if you said, no, not me, well, the Bible says if you say you have no sin, uh, you lie in the truth, <laughs> it's not in you. And so I, I'll just stick with the Bible, amen. And so according to the Bible, this is proof that we're not as saved as we're going to be. Amen. Now come to Romans chapter 8. So what is the helmet of salvation? How do we use the helmet of salvation? Romans chapter 8, look at verse 16. I'm going to read a bunch of verses here. And we'll go back and look at some stuff. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Present tense. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that ye may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption 
into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Now, just, just briefly, in verse 16, the Bible tells us that we are children of God, present tense. In verse 17, the Bible tells us that we are joint heirs with Christ. In verse number 18, the Bible tells us that our suffering doesn't compare to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. In verse number 19, we're waiting for something. In verses 20 through 22, the whole creation is groaning and travailing right now. In verse 23, our body will one day be redeemed. Our soul is already redeemed. In verse 24, we see what God has for us. We can't see what God has for us, but we're hoping for it. Amen. And you know what the verse says? It says, but hope that is seen is not hope. And then in verse number 25, we're waiting for it. We're with patience, wait for it. And so now I know what you're thinking. You say, preacher, what, what in the world does any of this have to do with the helmet of salvation? Well, the helmet, as I've made mention of, it protects our head. And the worst problem that we have the majority of the time is in our head. We, we, our, our mind, our attention, our thinking gets on things that are not pleasing to the Lord or on things, even if they're not sinful, our flesh has a way of being consumed with things that we have no control over or being consumed with the cares of this world. And I promise you, friend, there's no satisfaction in that. There's no, there's no comfort in that. But when our mind begins to think upon the things that are eternal and the things that are spiritual and the things that we have not yet seen but we hope for, we patiently are waiting for those things. That is a helmet of salvation. It keeps us from going crazy. <laughs> Amen. And so our thoughts need to be on our future salvation when our body is redeemed. Or we could say it this way, when we receive the fullness of our salvation, when our faith is made sight. Now, I'll give you some examples concerning that because these are just life's examples. These are just things that happens when, when tragedy comes, when there is a loss of life or health. I, I, I would never make light of any of those issues. I wouldn't try to downplay any of those issues for nothing in this world. They're, they're serious and they're life altering. But if, but if our mind stays in that mindset and if our mind stays on that, it's not healthy. It's extremely unhealthy. But if we'll get our, if I will get our mind and our thoughts on what God has done and what God is doing and what God will do for us, that is a helmet that protects our sanity, when trouble comes, when it comes in the family, it comes in the home, it comes in the church, and, and those things will consume our thought life. Those things will consume uh, our mind. Those things will direct all of our, uh, all of our attention. They will demand all of our time. And, and if we don't get our head back hoping for things that we cannot see and waiting patiently for those things, We'll lose our sanity. So we need this helmet of salvation. Trials are going to come. There are tests that comes, comes along in our life. And I believe that many of these times God either sins or at least God allows these tests to come. And they come to see if we are going to continue to faithfully trust in Him or if we're going to wane or reel or fall down, stop standing. If we're, if we're going to go our own way and do our own thing or if we're going to continue to hope for the things that we have not seen and patiently wait for them trusting God. Lord, help us to trust Him. Amen. I heard a man say, I was preaching in the, in the Bible conference this week, and one of the preachers said this. The, the theme of the Bible conference was Christian leadership, and it, it was a great conference. But I heard him say this. He said, he said that there are two things that reveal the character of man, poverty and prosperity. 
And boy, that, that, that is probably the truth. And so uh, we, whether it be poverty or whether it be prosperity, we have to trust the Lord in poverty. We have to trust the Lord in prosperity. Whatever the case is, whatever the situation is, our character is to be summed up by whether or not we have the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the girdle of truth, and the helmet of salvation. And we're standing firm in who He is and not in who we are. Amen. God help us. So when others quit, oftentimes folks quit. Folks that we have looked up to or those that we have once enjoyed fellowshipping with and they, and they quit. I, I uh, could compile a list. I won't for their sake and for your sake and for my well-being. But I, 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 have a, I could make a whole list of preachers that I have one time preached with and fellowshiped with who are no longer in the ministry. I could, I could make a list of church folks. Sometimes my wife and I will uh, we'll get to reminiscing and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about folks who used to come to church here and folks at one time fellowshiped here and folks who are one time faithful and now they're gone. And so you, you have a choice to make. I can, I can be deterred because of decisions that others have made. I can, I can go down the same path that they have chosen. And I'm, and I'm not being critical of any of those. I, I hope they get things right with the Lord. I, I hope they're restored to fellowship. I hope, I hope there's repentance and there's a rejoicing in the truth again. I, I pray for all of those things, for all those people. But if I our mind gets on all of those who chose to go in that direction. It's not healthy. So we need that helmet of salvation to protect us and protect our way of thinking. So others quit. Others change. There's, uh, there's folks who one time stood for truth and righteousness and holiness and the King James Bible and, and all of these kind of things that we enjoy and that we fellowship around and, and rejoice in. And they, and they have decided that, you know, maybe, maybe one of those other versions is just as good or better. Or, or maybe they've decided that, you know, we ought to put a little thump and bump in our music. Or, or maybe we should paint the walls black and turn the lights purple. I, I don't know what the case may be, but I can't think on those things. Amen. My, my things are on the Word of God. And the fact that one of these days the salvation that I currently have is my faith is going to become sight into things that I hope for that I have not seen. I am going to one day see and all the tears and all the sorrow and all the heartache and all the death and all, the, all of those things are going to be passed away and my flesh is going to be redeemed. Amen. That's the helmet of salvation. I remember years ago, I was playing Little League Baseball, and for the most time, I either played shortstop or first base, but I, as I advanced playing baseball, I wound up in right field because I wasn't no good. And uh, I, I would be out there, and sometimes my attention would be on something that was going on, the kids playing, riding bicycles over here on the side and stood in the ball game, and you know what the coach would do? Tim! Hey, hey, get your head in the game. I think the Lord is leaning over the portals of glory and he's calling some of his names and hey, you need to get your head in the game. You're drifting, you're wondering. Your eyes are on all that's going on over here that doesn't concern you. And we need this helmet of salvation so we can keep our thoughts and our minds together and stay in the game. Saved people endure horrible things in life just like lost people do. So the difference is we've got another salvation coming. And I, I touched on this just a little bit this morning, but some folks have concluded that if they stop serving God, if they stop being faithful, if they stop standing for truth, maybe, uh, maybe things will get better. Maybe there won't be any more Problems. Maybe there won't be any more trouble. It's just nonsense. I promise you that's nothing but nonsense. I don't mean to discourage you. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm not doing a good job. I'm trying to encourage you. Things, things down here are not likely to get better. I, uh, I, I'm not a gloom and doom preacher. I believe any of us can have revival anytime we want it. 
I don't know that there's ever going to be another national revival, but that's not God's fault. And it doesn't mean that God can't do it. It means that people have turned to worldliness and ungodliness and, and the things of this world. They have no interest in God, and God's not going to force himself on anybody. I was listening yesterday. Last night I was listening to the uh, brother, uh, brother Manny was interviewing Brother James Knox. And I was watching that, uh, that YouTube video when he was interviewing him. And Brother James was got to talking about some of those uh, old preachers of the past. And he was talking about uh, talking to the song leader for Brother Oliver B. Green. And uh, he said that that song leader said, you know, they would they'd have a month-long meeting. And it wasn't uncommon for 600 people to get saved in three or four churches to be started out of those tent meetings. And, and, and Brother James asked him, what, why has things changed? Why is preachers now, why don't we have that kind of success? And he said, because right after that, television came. And then Little League came. And then all of these other things begin to come. And now everybody has one of these within, within their palm. Within the, I got one somewhere. I never will forget what I heard a preacher say in a youth meeting one time. He pulled that thing out and he said, the far country is not so far away. And boy, that's the truth. Brother James said people were having all those, all those uh, revivals and all those meetings and all those people were getting saved because there wasn't distractions that we deal with today. And I'm glad you're saved. I'm glad you're in church at 2 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. That's a blessing. I'm going to tell you right now, Satan has not given up and he wants to distract you. He wants to get your head out of the game and thinking on things that don't matter. And things that are not all that important. If he can do that, he can get your mind off of the main thing. And that's reaching the world with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you and I, we're saved. We're, we're in a world full of trouble. But when we leave this world, it's goodbye to all of our trouble. It's goodbye to all of our sorrows. Goodbye to all of our pain. I'll tell you, that man that dies lost... The only heaven he's ever experienced is all the hell he suffered while here on earth. And it's going to be a miserable time. So my hope is in things above. Amen. The helmet of salvation is what keeps all this great truth together in our thought life. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of people. A lot of times we, we have this mentality of this idea that Satan's going to get me or the devil's going to get me. I'll, I'll tell you right now, our thoughts, will get us, uh, our thoughts will get us in trouble before the devil gets up in the morning. You better gather them and get them inside that helmet and get your mind on the things of the Lord. We need to be thinking about Jesus and how he saved us. And we need to be thinking about constantly about the fact that he's going to save us. Amen. Father, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to stand again this afternoon and declare truth from your word. Lord, you help us. Please help us. Help us as individuals and as a group collectively to gather our thoughts concerning the things of God and to put a helmet on our head to protect those thoughts, I pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for loving us and for all that you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you so much for coming and being with us this afternoon.